program. I have a more general question, not so specific to my life, but I've been doing your work and the weekly tapes and all that and um, getting so much out of it. And I'm curious, what if you have two downstream rockets of desire that seem to be vibrationally opposite of one another? So I can well, give you a specific. Well, you... before you do, we, we, we'll answer the question and then as you give us the specific, we'll explain it even further. If you have two downstream thoughts, some of the people were talking about that, all of these creative ideas that seem different, but they all feel good. So they're all downstream. Law of attraction will work out the details. And the fact that you've got the downstream thoughts and you're focusing has you pointed downstream. And usually there is a whole other scenario that unfolds that captures the both of them or even in entirely different things. In other words, you're using the downstream thoughts to get to the vibrational escrow that has been in the process of becoming perfect for you. And if you don't get too mentally involved in it, then you get there quickly. For example, for example, um, in relationship. Okay. Um, there's part of me, I would say 50% who is still looking for that ideal mate. And there's another 50% that really enjoys my aloneness and just, just enjoying who I am and living alone and doing all that. But there's another part of me that's like, well, is there the other out there who will be my complement to that? And well, so now let, let's talk about this. So as you think about the positive aspects of relationship and they point you downstream in other words you think about the physical interaction you think about the mental stimulation you think about the fun of, of of engaging on different subjects as you think about that and those are downstream thoughts and then you think but then i won't be free and that's an upstream thought so now these downstream thoughts are have have been put there they're in your vibrational escrow so now as you make an effort to do something about this upstream thought by acknowledging that being with another who is compatible doesn't make you feel not free and coming together with someone who like you enjoys independence wouldn't be not free that what you're really talking about is you don't want a possessive relationship you don't want a jealous relationship you don't want a re relationship that sucks the life out of you but there are relationships that, in other words if you find someone who is wanting the level of relationship and freedom and expansion and joy that you do then those are all downstream thoughts you see and so by being aware of the way you feel you sift through the thoughts that you are thinking with an ear to the ground about how they feel and you try to find thoughts that give you relief sometimes a thought such as well I don't have to make the decision right now or the relationship that I'm looking for won't feel like that or I'm certain that there are people out there that feel like I do or when it's really right I'll know it or I can make the decision as I go along or I may find someone and it may be the most wonderful beginning and as it evolves I may realize that it's not the forever relationship that I'm looking for but so what in other words you just keep reaching for the thoughts that feel downstream and in the process you allow your vibrational escrow to continue to percolate and most important you don't hold yourself vibrationally apart from it so your inspiration your impulses all lead you toward that very often it's a really common scenario for a relationship to feel like security to someone and like trampling freedom to the other and so but if you focus upon the part of the relationship that you don't want that's the part law of attraction matches you up with mm -hmm. That's why you've got to practice the downstream thoughts. So if you practice the thoughts that feel good to you prior to coupling with anyone and you practice it long enough that it really is inherently who you are and how you feel, it would not be possible for the universe to deliver a partner to you that would trample your toes of freedom. It just can't happen. Well, it's interesting because the past three relationships I've drawn into my life, I've drawn in after starting your work and the thing with all three of the relationships is that all of them have been un emotionally unavailable 
right? So to me, after doing your work, that's like, you know, having a thermometer that doesn't tell the temperature. It's just, you know, somebody who's unable to get an access with their emotions. But it's a vibration of the thing that you must understand, and we think you do, it might be right where we're going, is that when someone appears to be emotionally unavailable to you, it's because you are holding them apart for some reason. In other words, you're the one, you're the one that is at the heart of this attraction process. And when you say the last three, it's easy to understand because you saw it in that one and amplified the vibration, which meant you attracted it in the next one, which amplified it more and attracted the next one. We would like to find some way of getting it through your head and everyone else's that through all of the experiences you've been having, you have incrementally and with terrific detail let the universe know exactly what you're looking for and every time you feel negative emotion you are defying your own desire so you say oh but wait I'm only feeling negative emotion because I'm looking right at something that is opposite of what I want and we say doesn't matter what excuse you're using right. and 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 further we notice with most of you the majority of your contradictory thought is not as a result of looking right at someone performing some behavior it's what's mull what you're mulling over in your mind afterward you see so you want to begin to just train yourself into the expectation that the universe knows even better than you could articulate exactly what you're looking for and when you are deliberately reaching for good feeling thoughts did, did you like that picture that throughout all that you've lived and even before you've been creating this vibrational escrow that is a vivid reality that is vibrationally based now sometimes our physical friends don't want to hear that because you're so used to your translation of vibration that the reality is something that you want to talk about in a different way than the vibrational reality but we want you to understand that this planet that's spinning in its orbit was one time not something anyone could see it was a thought vibration mm -hmm. everything is thought vibration before it takes form long before the manifestation comes about well now that you're here in this physical realm your brink of manifestation is very much quicker in other words the gap between your desire your your inception or creation of a desire and your ability to realize it is a very short period of time it does not take a, a long time for you to get into the state of no longer contradicting your desire before it can appear in your experience but most of you are so habitual in your thoughts that you keep thinking the same resistant thoughts that you've practiced all along and so even though uh, source is calling you toward what you want you're not letting yourself go there or you're not letting yourself see it even though oftentimes it's right under your nose where if you are deliberately reaching for better feeling thoughts and you are taking the manifestation out of the equation and you are letting your quest be about turning downstream in other words rather than saying I'm turning downstream so that I can find the relationship I want I'm turning downstream so that I can find the relationship I want that's what happens I'll apply this process so that I can get something that I don't have where if you're turning downstream because it's fun if you're turning downstream because you like relief if you're turning downstream because you like hope better than doubt if you're turning downstream because you like laughing more than crying if you're turning downstream because it's natural to you're turning downstream not for the ulterior motive that you'll get the goods if you turn downstream you're turning downstream because downstream is what is natural then what happens is you turn downstream because downstream is who you are and as you turn downstream because downstream is who you are then you meet up with everything that you've been asking for so you see the work is not the difficult thing you have been thinking that it is it isn't about figuring it out all at once and it isn't about solving the problems of the world or even about solving your own problems it's about recognizing that the solutions are already there it's about recognizing that the answers to your questions are already there it's about recognizing that your fortunes have already amassed and your lovers are already queued up for you it's about recognizing that vibration has preceded you because when you ask it is given and now your work is to allow what has been given 
in. You cannot get it wrong. You've heard us say that a few times here. And something that we've been feeling from you, it's really an interesting thing. So many of you come to this paradise in the quest to relax and lay back. And then you become the most intense people on the planet. <laughs> You are so determined to find your freedom that you fight for it in ways you don't need to fight for it. In every bit of fight or struggle or quest, you're pointed upstream. In every bit of relaxing and allowing and breathing and trusting, you are downstream. When you hope, you're more downstream than when you doubt. When you appreciate you are more downstream than when you criticize. When you laugh, you are always more downstream than when you cry. When you look into your past, you are usually more upstream than downstream. When you look into your future, you are usually more downstream than upstream. When you look into your now, where all of your power is you have the choice but the choice isn't a great thought as opposed to a bad feeling thought the choice is only a slightly better or a slightly worse feeling thought and that's what you want to tune yourself to you want to tune yourself to is this an improved thought or not Esther is driving down the highway in the monster bus with the car in tow wailing at speeds we cannot tell you we really can't tell you the speedometer doesn't go that far sometimes <laughs> and Jerry is in the back clinging to life <laughs> doing some project working on something and Esther will think of something that she wants to tell him but he can't hear her she was honking the horn but it was scaring drivers off into the bushes <laughs> So she found a button that she can push that when she pushes it, it turns all the lights on. And when she pushes it again, it turns all the lights off. So he sees the lights go on and off and he realizes Esther has something to say. So he puts away whatever he's doing and makes his way all the way to the front of the bus and says, yes, you have something you want to say. And Esther sometimes says, oh, never mind. It was an upstream thought. <laughs> and we say, isn't it nice that he was all the way in the back of the bus? Because if he'd been sitting right there next to her, she just would have blurted it out. And then he would have either agreed, which would have made it more upstream, or disagreed, which would have made it more upstream for Esther. In other words, when you've got an upstream thought and you start talking about it, it always becomes more upstream. But the fact that it took him a while to get there gave her an opportunity to realize that it was upstream and to begin making another decision. And that's what we wish for you. We wish for you to realize that you have an option of feeling a little worse or feeling a little better. And that's all that the art of allowing is. And as you make the decision to feel better as much as you can, before you know it, all that stuff that's been lined up outside your door, all that stuff that's floating free in the river, all that stuff that the universe has orchestrated on your behalf begins to flow into your experience. You rendezvous with the answers to your questions. You rendezvous with the solutions to your problems. You rendezvous with your lovers and your fortunes and your wonderful times of life. You rendezvous with what you deserve and have deserved all along. And we take such delight in watching the rendezvous. But do you know, we're taking delight already in what you've amassed. And if you have to croak before you catch up, that's fine with us. But this gathering is about showing you how to catch up now, if it is your desire. We've enjoyed this interaction immensely. There is great love here for you. We are complete. Thank you.